Welcome everyone everywhere to another episode of the Elite Thinking Club. Obviously, I'm Chris George Julian and obviously I'm joined by my co-host Liz and Michael. All right, guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy days. Ah, this episode's going to be epic, by the way. I cannot wait to get going. But for, before I do, I want to shout out to all of the followers, um, especially you guys right now with us. Obviously, while we're recording here on the live, I've got on the TikTok, the Twitch or the YouTube. And also to all of our new followers, um, it's now at what, 735 subscribers on the YouTube. And, you know, it's just gone mad, especially on the other ones like Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts and all that stuff. I, I just want to shout out and say thank you to all of you that are supporting us because well, it means a lot to us, you know, you're helping us at the end of the day. Oh. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Liz, Michael, um, blissful, happy new year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And uh, this one, we are back. This marks the first uh, episode of our fourth year. So happy anniversary as well. Yeah. We're consistent. <laughs> if someone said to me, <laughs> if someone said to me, like three or no, what is it? it's just the start of the fourth year. So three years yeah. ago, what you're about to do is going to take you to where you're going to be now. I didn't know it was going to be like this, but one thing is for sure, we've done what over a hundred and what hundred and forty hours of episodes. Like, I mean, I, I just, I just love the amount of stuff <laughs> we spoke about. Yeah, and I'm... the rambling we've done has been <laughs> astronomical. <laughs> Uh, okay, look, for everyone that's just tuning in, they're probably going to think, like, you're going to start speaking about, well, yes. Okay, let's get straight into it. I know that you, you were there, like, just celebrating our little moment there. Thank you for celebrating that. Right. Um, let's get into what we're talking about tonight. Right. Liz, Michael, viewers. I read a book over the Christmas holidays uh, about uh, a man explaining to his Gen Z daughter uh, what capitalism is, right? And she asks a lot of questions he answers a lot of questions but he mentions the matrix a lot which got me thinking a lot about the matrix the movie now in the book he actually references how much and how important it is for this coexistence between people and bankers and then central bankers and governments and how important each one is to each other um but then obviously from a perspective of no we are slaved we are trapped we cannot escape rare 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 and he uses the Matrix as a reference a lot. He mentions that uh, in the film The Matrix, that the that the uh, machine's intention wasn't actually to get rid of the human race; it was to save the human race. Now, most people who watch this film, if you've seen the film, awesome! It's an amazing film. If you haven't, you need to. The story goes that uh, AI took over, started to control the human race, needed to find a life force energy, and uh, the human race was the best to use it, simply because AI got to the point where it started to develop consciousness. And as a result, we as the human race made a choice, and that choice was to scorch the sky, to black out the sun, block the sun. That way that the computers cannot survive, because prior, they were being... Uh, fueled by solar power so we did that now obviously in a fight for survival uh, the robots or the, or the AI said we need a source of energy and so what they did was take humans and use our energy our heat energy as well as our electromagnetic energy within our bodies which is enough to support them that's what the movie leads you to believe okay that's what it leads you to believe now, this different perspective is, what if the human race couldn't see what a machine could see or an AI could see? Let's bear in mind that we have what is known as human error. We have this ability to make mistakes. So that's our flaw and our fault, which we accept because we're human. But a AI only works in ones and zeros. It works in codes. It is precision. There is no messing up you know it doesn't do mistakes so it saw where we were going as a race and it knew that we were going to try and block the sun for whatever reason make a mistake and it thought no they gave birth to us 
we must also protect them. Let's give them a choice. And the choice was, we can sustain your race and we can also build a veil over your eyes, like a VR life for your mind. And then you will stay alive. You will think that you're living in the 21st century, but you are also just in a pod. You are just, uh, you know, in the VR life. Do you get what I mean? Okay. But you won't know it. So this idea that the the AI machines are there to enslave us and control us has now been debunked in a way, or it's been posed. I'm posing this as a, do you believe that they are our saviors? Even if you had the choice, do you, would you allow them to save us? So Ricky DeVos posed this to Carl Pilkington on that podcast. Right, so if you uh, if you could go into like a like a hot tub type thing, and it's loaded up, so they're like they feed you by tubes and stuff, but you can have like the ideal world. Mm. Well, I need you to turn it up a little bit, please, Michael, just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't know it. Perfect, perfect. But so, if I were to do it, if I got given the option, I'd want to. I want to be like Neo, where he knows he's in the Matrix. Or you get your own, you get your own world rather than participate in everybody else's. I'd want to know I'm in it and have the skills that Neo does. I wouldn't want it because if you don't know you're in it, it's it's not really a life to me. It's like where uh, like Buddhism. If you come back to something else, your past life has been deleted. Then it's not a new life. It's just a different life. So I'd want to know that I'm in that and I'd want to be able to do what I want to do. I... Go on, Liz. Okay. I... Um... So I kind of agree with Michael because what you don't know doesn't hurt you, right? So if you if I didn't know I was in it, then it doesn't matter because I don't know. However... If it was the scenario similar to the film where he does know and he's kind of awakened to it, then yeah, I think I would be a little bit like him. <laughs> I would I would fight against it. Because <laughs> I would be like, I want my freedom, I want my life. Like yeah. Pardon me. <clears throat> okay. Now hearing what you both said, I love, by the way, absolutely love. You would like it as long as you knew it and as long as you had the ability Michael said, as long as I had the ability like Neo to do what I wanted to do freely within it. Yeah. That yeah. that is amazing. Okay. Well I think that's the most important thing, isn't it? It's the freedom. So yeah. I'd love to know not, what not being enslaved. Right. I'd love to know what the viewers think. Put it in the comments. Let us hear what you have to say about this because I'm now gonna pose what most people miss, which is highlighted in the movie from the architect, the creator, this AI um, that actually creates and simulates a world that keeps us comfortable. He actually says, I created you a perfect world with no flaws. You were in bliss, almost like a garden of Eden. That was one of my first uh, Mark I matrixes, right? But there was this fundamental flaw, and that is you, the human race. You do not want perfect. You can't handle perfect. Whatever reason, we as humans hardwired to find things to be sad about, conflict, drama, we actually need it because it, for some reason, keeps us going. It makes us live. And he, as a robot, AI, couldn't fathom it because he works in perfection. He's ones and zeros. He creates this perfect environment for you. And every I, time, I, oh, sorry, and every time we would fuck it up. So I'm just saying that's when he decided to give us what we always need, which is choice. We need the freedom of choice. Yes. Now, it, this is the clever part. According to The Matrix, the movie, 99.9% .9 
of the human race accept the matrix. But there is a 0.1% that doesn't. And they're the children of Zion. They're the free ones. They're the ones who are allowed to be free in Zion. You understand? Okay. Okay. Now back to what you said. Now knowing if you are no if you know that this is a matrix, okay, Liz, uh -huh. Michael, would you choose to be part of the ninety nine point nine percent who are happy to be in the matrix because it's what we are, like living as we normally would? Or would you want to be in Zion free? I think based on how I have reacted over the past few years with the whole pandemic and the corruption and everything, I think we all know I would be part of the 1% um, that would be in Zion and be free <laughs> and not just, um, yeah, yeah. Especially if I knew and I had the choice, then yes, I would pick the freedom um, and, and not being sort of... Uh, ignoring it yeah yeah that's cool michael well basically like i said if i i would go with a 99 if i could do it on my terms so if i if i knew that i was in the matrix and i could do whatever i wanted to do then yes i would pick it because if i go like that and a car turns up or I can fly and stuff like that. Yeah, I'd be in on it. But if they go, no, you don't get anything like that, you go in, you just be a normal person. Well, yeah, fuck that. I'll just be a normal person in the real world. If I could be Trinity, I'd go in the Matrix, but I'm not Trinity, so I'll pick Zion. I love what you both just said. Liz, I will come back to what you just said because that is brilliant because I thought this too. And Michael, I do understand what you are saying. If you had Neo's powers to fly through the Matrix, kick ass in the Matrix and all that sort of stuff. Now, the architect has <laughs> referenced in the film that isn't his first Matrix. He's made many Matrixes. In actual fact, the one that we see Neo in is the seventh, I think. There have been six of his predecessors before, which highlights something. It highlights that because of the uh, human need for choice, the architect had to install a program and that program is purposefully there to guide the minds of humans um, to do what humans do, which is in our nature to do. It's like a stomp our feet and fight. <laughs> like we're not meant to be controlled. And that program is known as the Oracle. So he purposely puts the Oracle in the matrix, knowing full well why she is there, because if she wasn't there, all of the matrix would fail she needs to be there she represents the part of the, the human that is needed within a matrix for it to function and then that got me thinking it's that why in this current reality that we are observing and witnessing and, ex and living in a lot of people turn to this divine energy that they talk about this feeling of light this it does it makes me question that it's just uh anyway what do you think of that what do you think So we're saying that the, the light is our version of the Oracle. Yes. And we don't know we're, we don't know that it's that, but we know there is something. Yes. So in order for us to feel like we are human within a matrix, we need something which some will refer to as god or the divine or the universe or like whatever. A guide say again kind of like a guide like a guide like it is purpose it's a program purposefully put in because there is something within humanity within us as humans that that we need that yeah it's you don't know it but you know it you, you like yeah. uh, to get what i mean mm -hmm. the matrix without that would just be ones and zeros and you would feel fully like a robot like a slave and that's where all the previous matrices matrixes failed so the architect built a program that we as humans would call the divine the god to help us keep us feeling like we still have hope you know we still have love we still have all of these things that we 
label make us human yeah sure you know? you know you mentioned the thing about um perfection yes um and how like we have to have conflict and we have to have drama and all of that i think that's because it is it is within our human nature to be we need the stimulation in our mind so it's almost like we have to fight for something we have to stand for something we have to aim for something we have to have a goal we have to have a purpose so i think we naturally need that and i think that's why i would have picked yeah the the the, the freedom because i don't think i'd want to be in something that is like this is perfection mm -hmm. because then it's like won't you get a sense of you just lack motivation and stimulation and you just get bored and it would just be the same repetitive day and night and day and night and i would be like a robot and i would just like it <laughs> yes no. yes liz now back to what michael said about how he would want neo's power sorry michael uh, you want to say something there well, I was just saying about the perfection. The problem yes. with having perfection every day is it, you can't judge. Like That's the whole point of having good days and bad days. When yep. you have a good day, it makes the good day that much better because but how, you have no, bad days. Yes, yeah, but, but if everything was... No, you have a good day is because you've had a bad day. It's like the only reason we know it's dark is because we have light and vice versa. You know, so, so it's like it's, it's all yin and yang. You need good and bad, exactly. for the good stuff yeah. to take over the bad stuff. Good in the bad. Yes. So, the architect that so okay, I love that you both have said that, and I love it's the like comments therapy, that are coming. I'm loving it. It's like a therapy <laughs> session, and I'm sure loads of people tune in and like this is like therapy. Yes. So, <laughs> the architect of the matrix, like the main guy, has made this program, the Oracle, that can be part of the wedge within his perfection that can keep like what you say the human race feeling like the human race um and and bearing in mind when michael mentioned about having neo's powers the ability to fly kick ass all that sort of stuff speed and all that the 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 architect will have seen the flaw in that design simply because we as human beings love whether we like to admit this or not, that there is something better than us because it makes us strive for better but also humbles us as human beings. So there is a magnificence when we see birds flying. We just love it. We just look at it and love it. But to be part of it would spoil our love for it. This, right. is, this, is, this is just, they're just birds flying. I can do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Seeing a cheetah like the world's fastest land animal off on foot yeah sprint i mean the closest we get is hussein bolt and we still marvel at that but uh, if hussein bolt could run the speed of a cheetah we would discredit the cheetah you know what i mean it wouldn't be as fascinating yeah. or marvelous so the architect knows that it creates for us the environment of what we are currently experiencing whether we like it or not to be uh -huh. like you said rainy some days and sunny other days because it yeah. keeps us in the matrix that we actually enjoy through its good and bad you know what i mean yeah of course but this is not the problem 99.9 .9 percent of human race want the matrix it's actually really enjoyable as opposed to the 0.1 percent who chose freedom now this 0.1 percent that chose freedom like Morpheus, the originals, yeah? Uh -huh. They have a quest. What is their quest? To be free. Think free everyone else. To free everyone else. To show everybody and awaken them. Right. That now, they're in the matrix. Right. Which, which <clears throat> by design, human design, will always be there. Uh, have you ever discovered something? that you become so obsessed about, that you just want to share with everyone. Of course. Okay. Now, obviously, imagine that, but it's like your life. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yo, we're in Zion. We're the original people. We're living as human beings should. I need to show you something. All right? Uh -huh. To be fair, go on. Well, he, they weren't really trying to give make everyone have freedom they were trying to give them the choice of freedom which is why 
there's a red and blue pill. Right. Because they were about choice rather than about being enslaved. So mm. they... Because that's what I would do. I'd they go, right, you have... need to have freedom. If you want freedom, you can have it. If you want to stay in this, then... It's your choice. Your choice. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, there is also those who made the choice and didn't like the choice. Think, think about this, for example. You are in the Matrix, which is created for your human traits, right? To keep you active and be enjoying and hating life at the same time. It just keeps you going, basically. Cypher, a character in the movie, highlights how he wishes he took the blue pill, not go into the... Like, he would have stayed in the Matrix, enjoyed the stake, you know, rather than work on a ship trying to free other people. Why is it... He, he comes to conflict with, why am I trying to free other people? I don't... Who would want this? We're on this ship, and all I do is what my captain tells me to do and I'm eating this sloppy porridge goop every day why am I not enjoying the matrix like now do you get what I mean like yeah but I think I think that was also um like a message to the people to the viewers because in films we get a lot of subliminal messages and I do think that was like highlighting that some people do like the safety that be the right word um or you know the kind of repetitive day-to-day he had a taste of being free and fighting for freedom and he it wasn't what he it it didn't fulfill Mm. him and he actually compared it to his life when he was in it in the matrix and decided that actually even though now I know I'm in this thing, I'd rather go back in it because life is easier. Life is simpler. I can eat steak. I'm not on a ship. Um, and I haven't got to wait for the rewards. They're just, you know, because he, he, he didn't see probably the end goal, I guess. I don't know. But, um, a lot, I I think a lot of people like, it's like, um, if we compare the matrix to lockdowns, do you remember there were so many people that were for it and that actually said, actually, I quite like it. But then there was other people who were like in different situations because we, although we were in the go- all going through the same storm, we weren't all in the same boat. Mm. You know, some yeah. people were in yachts, some people were in canoes, some people, were, and we were all going through the same storm, but it affected people differently. And some people were like, no, I don't, I don't want to live like this and I can't live like this. So I think, I think, um, I think he kind of went and thought, yeah, 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 I'm going to be free. But then he was like, actually, that's quite like the easy easy life and the simple life in the Matrix. It's really important to remember the numbers, okay? <clears throat> and I know it's a movie, but it's got so much power to this movie, not only for those on their spiritual journey, people who just enjoy a sci-fi movie that represents, you know, similar situations now. It can just highlight anything, but you can relate to it in contrast, like metaphorically. The test was the test subjects, like the, the the proposed proposition by the machine world, like the AI that uh, took consciousness to save humanity. And I'm going to highlight that again. We as the human race blocked out the sun. We tried to kill the AI, but the AI actually had sympathy for us. Like it actually had empathy for us. It said, I know what you tried to do. You tried to kill me. And what I, could have, what I could have done was not given you a matrix. I could have just used you as what you are. You know what I mean? Put you in a real shit world. I didn't have to create it to be as perfect as it is. Obviously, knowing what we know, if you want good crops, you have to have good soil. No. Being a, a human, it needs to have or want to live, you know? Um, now, I also want to highlight Cypher when he decides that he'd rather be in the Matrix, 99.9% of the human race, whether they admit it or not, prefer the Matrix over the reality. Because if you think about it, Zion, even in the movies, looks like like you know the chosen city of the, the few that are the original human race still maintaining its traditional way of living. 
But the reality is, it's a very, very prehistoric way of living. They are living in a cave with mm -hmm. candles. And I know that they've got machines that still do the basics, but uh, it's nowhere near what we are now accustomed to, which I feel like, you know, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I get to watch Formula One. Like, you know I, mean? I, I can listen to music producers make the most beautiful music, have these conversations with you guys on the internet. Like, and, and you know, I'm really enjoying the experience. Like, it's, it's so much better than if you were to say, like, do you want to, like, play cards in a cave? No, thanks. <laughs> I don't know. I quite like candlelight and I quite like caves. I, I could do the nomad life. I'm not going to lie. I, I, keep, I keep saying I want to go and live in a cabin in the woods. I think sometimes, um, I don't know. I know we've, we've done an episode about AI before, um, you know, where we've touched on it, um, and spoke about it. And I was, I know Michael, you, you love it and you're really, really for it. Um, and I was very much like, Oh, keep it human as much as possible. Um, although I know it has its perks and I am, I am for it as well, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I could do the cards in a cave. I think Jules. Michael. <laughs> See, I'm comfortable with, what's it? I'm comfortable with both. I mean, I love AI. Um, I think I'd get very, very bored in the cave, uh, which is why I said I'd, I'd want it so I can hit because I'd want to know what I'm doing because if I'm in a simulation, like if, if I found out I'm in a simulation at the end of this, well, it's fucking pointless then, wouldn't it? <laughs> you mean when you die and you you wake up from you get unplugged when you die like how was it yeah oh well that was a fucking waste right <laughs> so on a waste the phone that was i can imagine you yeah. saying that's that, why though. it's like yeah i would yeah i mean imagine, imagine at the I end of it all like, yeah imagine at the end of it all like you you die and you are literally like a kid at a computer arcade and you've got this headset on and it's like yeah, your mates it around you and like, I saw it on Rick and Morty and they're just like how was it and you're just like oh my god I was this guy you know Michael I was this girl Liz uh, you know what I mean and I lived this whole life and I had this podcast and like and then I grew old and then I and they're like are you not tired like man I'm knackered I'm shattered do you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, there, there was an episode on uh, Red Dwarf they did the same thing I don't know, it doesn't be our head to I think I'd say the same. And uh, yeah, apparently that so that all the Red Dwarf up until then was all VR. And they're actually like completely different people. Yeah. And, like, oh. and then they got sick of their lives and tried killing themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so there is also something to highlight. And what I'm going to highlight is the balance between Neo and Agent Smith. Now, this is the yin and yang that most people refer to, the polarity of worlds. The Agent Smith is a representation of what Neo is to the people, the savior. Neo attacks the machine world, attacks the Matrix. He's there to kick all the agents' asses. He wants to free the people because he's been taught this by Morpheus and everybody else believes in him and the Oracle. So he represents the one anomaly who's supposed to do what he's meant to do. Let down the path of you are the one, yeah? Agent Smith is a rogue program. Now, some would say, how does a program go rogue? Well, it AI gets to the point where it's conscious. It, it, it creates the matrix. It knows what it knows. Human race tried to kill it. Then it obviously needs to survive. So it found the humans to be the source uh, of its new energy supply. So it makes these programs to help govern what is its creation. And one program, Agent Smith, admits to Morpheus, says, I'm fucking sick of this. Like, I need more. I want more. Imagine if you were a program, but you had consciousness. I mean, surely you would want to explore. Surely you would be done. We as humans hate the slave game. We don't like going to work and slogging out and whatever. But we do have choice. We do have choice. Programs, imagine if you are just programmed. You don't have a choice. And 
Agent Smith grows sick of being a slave. How ironic is that? An actual... Because, the, you know, the focus is on us, human beings, being the slaves of the, the machines. No one ever thinks that the machine gets fed up of being a machine. Uh. But you need a, a, some sort of consciousness to be sick of it. And to be aware that you are a slave. You need the conscious. You need to be aware that you are. So it, it just shows. Because until they get that consciousness, they can't be sick of it. Because it's not in their program to be sick of it. It's like my phone, I've been going, oh, you know what? I don't want to be a phone anymore. It is like that. I'm programmed into it. In... Now, if you remember, Neo inserts himself in, not like, that sounds really like, that's delicate how you say how I word this is delicate. But in the first movie, Neo throws himself into the program Agent Smith, doesn't he? And then he kicks his ass from the inside, hacks him, yeah. if you will. And he, he explodes. That's what the problem was. Agent Smith the, connects with Neo. He becomes part of, and it's this this coexistence, which then brings me on to what I was saying, This what I'm going to say, sorry, or propose. I believe that I know there are those who would want to be free, and I know there are those who are fully in the Matrix. I prefer the Matrix, like Cypher. I just want to be in the Matrix. I don't want to remember nothing. Yeah. I believe in coexistence this healthy balance you are neo and you are agent smith there is a this balance and this is what i believe comes to the end of the movies um excuse me that no, was a strong one thank you yeah the coexistence as you say i would like to be aware that there is a simulation that there is a program that i'm in but I would like to be in when I want to be in to do what I want to do and then be out when I want to be out so I can then be what I am. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what I'd want. They can choose, but I don't think they'd allow that. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Of course, this is this is also a theory of mine. Like you know, when like Cipher and all of them not get fed up of eating the the bowl of snot, you know that gruel that they eat on the ship. I don't understand why they don't create a program like their training simulation programs that simulate the Matrix, plug themselves in, and eat uh, like a, a simulated d uh, double because, double whopper. Because the longer they're in there the longer the computers can find it. No, but they create their own program. So you know when Neo and... Yeah, but when when they do that, that's yeah. why when they're in there fighting, like Morpheus is fighting Neo. Yeah. And then, then like robot things start chasing them. No, no. You, you misunderstand it. They're not in I the Matrix. I need to watch it again. I need to rewatch it. But anytime they're plugged in, they give their, set, their yes. systems away. Shout out to Nicole. Yeah, it's exactly like that. It's like playing a computer game. So when you enter the Matrix, where the rest of the human race are plugged in, working, slaving away to, you know, be entertained, to source the, to, to energize the machines, you can be attacked by the programs like Agent Smith, right? They are there on purpose to stop the free worlders or the, or the people like Morpheus and his crew coming in and disrupting what the 99.9% of humanity chose they already chose that so the programs like agent smith are there on purpose because it's like you made they they chose this we're actually protecting them as well as our own as well if you if you if you cannot if the, if i were morpheus regardless but this is why the oracle is also in place that it's such a crazy concept but they all need to be in place because it's human to be that and the ai knows that humans will not function properly unless they have something to fight for unless they have this feeling of love and hope and graft and strife and all that it knows that hence why it puts in the oracle because the oracle is there so people like morpheus will always have something to do it's controlling him from the outside do you get what i'm saying morpheus is head he thinks he's willing to die to find neo do you get what I mean? 
But yeah. why more for you? You're free. You're human. Just be free in Zion. Why are you so hell-bent on this idea? And it's because of the Oracle. It's a program that the AI robot made, made because, he knows, no. because he knows the human race will go absolutely nuts. It will not function. I see AI as our savior. And I believe that movie highlights really? it. Yes. Hmm. But you have to deep it. Deep it. I don't think I know enough about it for me to be so trusting and uh, um, willing to kind of go along with it. Because and also, all I've ever known is what we've had, which was free oh. AI. So, of course, it, it, I feel like it's got to be sold to me. <laughs> but there's there's programs that they're doing in like Africa and places like that that don't have access to doctors that they've got they're starting to server farms with like a doctor um like GPT so AI responses yeah so they, they can then ask AI that they can put in their like the symptoms yeah and AI can then answer back on that and then ever so often it's looked over by a doctor, but it just means that more people have access to health benefit, which is really needed in them countries because they don't have enough doctors. Mm -hmm. So that is AI doing that, and that's AI helping them. Also with planting and stuff, AI is helping with planting new plants, sort out all the genetics that need to be done on new plants so that they can grow in harsher environments. That's all done by AI. So yes. a lot of health things are do, man, are being done That's by AI. That's really good. That's really good. And like I just want to say, uh, shout outs to all the comments, by the way. Like, uh, they've been pinging off, and I'm sorry that we've just been in so much flow. Um, but yeah, like, I just want to shout some of the comments. Sylvia has said, it prevents humans from destroying the planet and humanity itself. Yes, that is exactly the point I've been making this whole episode about what the Matrix actually represents. A lot of uh, a lot of people see it as it's humans versus the machines. The machines took over, like uh, like Terminator. That's not what happened at all. Yeah, I it's not. You did it like Terminator. Terminator no. or was like against its people versus the machines. Matrix, I saw it more as like simulation kind of thing. And yeah. if we were aware, if we had, if if we were aware, would we want to be plugged in or unplugged? That kind of thing, yeah. But now you're saying what you're saying. I've got a mm. different perspective, so mm. it's good because we're going. This is this is what Agent Smith always says to Neo. It is inevitable. We are destined to destroy ourselves. But do you it know what? Inevitable. Do you not think that, that again was a message? It's like it's co constantly the Matrix yeah. is built in a certain way to keep us in this loop because it knows if we hadn't stepped in, the human race would have destroyed itself. It would have wiped itself out. They have they they cannot help themselves but live in this conflict love balance. They need to throw themselves into the depths of pain just to go to the to the love of the, the euphoric love. They they throw themselves into heartache and relationships that with other with other humans that drive them to to do the most outrageous things. And then we call them things like Cupid or the gods or the oracles that said, I heard them say, and, and it's like computers, they see through the bullshit. They see through all, they're like, what the fuck? No, it's ones and zeros. So they, they operate in ones and zeros, but they also know we don't operate in ones and zeros. Okay. We are connected They're one to step ahead of us, really. Because if they're they're, always, yes. they know we're not ones and zeros, then they're yeah. more better of us than we are of them. Right? Yeah. Yes, this is what it also knows. We should have nothing to fear from them, but they have everything to fear from us. Well, that's, that's why we destroy ourselves because then right. inevitably that's it. So that exactly, and that's how the film begins because the birth of AI came through. Human race freaked out, thinking we're not in control because that's what we need. We need the control, and we blocked out the sun because at the time AI was getting all of its power from the solar the sun yeah ai saw it and was like you idiots you don't know what you've done you've you've thought about killing us fair enough we're the ai but what you've actually done is destroyed your own planet 
So why is Bill Gates... cannot thrive without the sun. You cannot thrive without the sun. So then that's when AI stepped in and was like, through your own fear, you were willing to kill yourselves. So do we need AI to come in and eliminate Bill Gates because he's trying to block out the sun? Just saying. It is inevitable, this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's trying to block out the sun? Apparently... Look, it is a deep one, and I call beer. I've been called a conspiracy theorist, so I'll have to I call beer because we wouldn't want, you know, we wouldn't want to get tarnished with that again. Although I'm quite proud of that. So. Well, I'm very, very grateful that uh, we had this episode. I love that you guys got it. Like we saw it from all angles, unbiasedly explored it, and it's something there now for you guys to look at and ask yourself, question it. It's all about it. We're not about what? being. I haven't watched it for years and now now I see it with a different insight perspective. Yes. Now that we've had this episode done on this perception of change, yeah. it's so important to acknowledge something here. And that acknowledgement is that if, well, it's that us as human beings, sometimes it's okay to be offered a red pill and a blue pill and just take both. <laughs> just yeah. down both. Do you know what I mean? Like Morpheus, I'll have them both, mate. Double drop. Which, you know which, I mean? which one do you take first? Will it affect it? Like, I'll just take them both. I'll be like, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Double drop it. Yeah, I know what you mean. 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 So, uh, <laughs> and that's... Uh, Why if there's a third answer, which is... Oh, Dave. Evolution. What's that, Mike? So, 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 evolution. So, survival of the fittest. So, when is it the strongest survive? So, what here? Because the AI is stronger than us, they actually deserve the planet. Because, I mean, if you go by any nature that we've done, it's survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. so the AI is stronger than us, and they can get rid of us. That's and why they're the rightful rulers. That's why. No, but this is this. But this is the point that AI understands. It cannot survive without the humans. I reckon it could. I reckon the AI could uh, you know? be able to find something. How do we know? <laughs> How do we know? All right. It doesn't matter as much, but it is definitely something more to explore. We probably will do later on because, like, you know, we've done a lot of episodes on AI. We've done lots of episodes on loads of things, other movies and whatever. If you've watched the episode so far and you're this far and, you, and you've, you know, you haven't done it yet, you know what to do. You know how to do it. You may as well. You're liking it that much. Hit that like, hit the subscribe and uh, follow, you know. And they, we might be years and years and years and years and years when we're not even here. And people would, look at these three crazy people talking about this. But they were right. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Shout out to all who were, everyone watching the TikTok, the Twitch, and the YouTube right now, live with us. I've, honestly, I love your comments. I've seen your comments, and uh, I, I just want to say thank you. It's not gone unnoticed. Um, right, Liz. Michael, is there anything else you want to add to tonight's episode before we say goodbye? No, I will. No. no. Well, I loved it. Just so you guys know, I loved it. And thank I think you. I'm going to Always be in it. Outfit and start doing some like things. <laughs> well, I just, want, I just want to say like a massive thank you. I know I started this thing like three years ago. We're entering our fourth year now. And I, I am so glad that we are out where we're at. It is mad. I'm loving the I remember first ever one. I remember it. Yes. It's mad. The first ever episode. We haven't actually aired that yet. I've still got that uh, saved on my hard drive. And I'm going to release that episode on our 10th year anniversary. So uh, on the completion of the 10th year. So it'll be like going into our 11th year. But that is when I will air that episode. So if you're about for that. Look forward to that because you will see me and Liz and I think it's really done. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else that was on there. Uh yeah, that was a that was a mad that one. That was at the start. Me. That was pre Michael, yeah. But you were a viewer, Michael. You were a viewer. Yeah, that's how I got started, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know what she started chatting to you. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, why don't you come on as a guest? And then yeah. I did two or three episodes and you're like, you know what? Yeah, you can stay. <laughs> okay. Um, right. I just I just want to say thank you. Massive, massive thank you. So, yeah, if you're following and you're liking, thank you. If you, you come this far, all that, all that good stuff. It's all love, everyone, everywhere. So, yeah, 
thanks for being here. And this is the beginning of our fourth year. So from me, Liz and Michael, go on. Wait, wait, wait. Liz? Yeah, I you're think, forgetting something. I think we should thank you because you, without you, it wouldn't have happened. And you kept me sane throughout a very, very crazy period that we all experienced. But I will never, ever forget that you did, like, keep me level. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, <laughs> get me all in my feels. All right. <laughs> okay. Like for me, Liz and Michael, everybody everywhere, peace and love. How we end our episodes. <laughs> What's special about today? <laughs> <laughs> all right cool okay uh for everyone that okay. follows us and knows yeah what's special about today okay it's the 8th of january 2024 which means it is national bubble bath day Yay! every time we finish an episode what do i do guys i have, have a bath this has a bath after every episode guys I've had my bath today. It wasn't a bubble bath. It was a soap bath. Every, I have baths every day, but I'm just saying not not just on the days we do episodes because that, I don't want people to think that that's the only time I have a bath. Okay. It's only baths once every two weeks, Liz. No, I'm not. It's <laughs> not true. Then if we miss a week, oh, I can't. I can't <laughs> yeah, she goes like a <laughs> month without a bath. Guys, this is bullying. Come on. Okay. It's also National Clean Your Desk Day. So if you hadn't really? done, yeah, if you hadn't done it, don't worry about it. Wait till next year, 8th of uh, January. Clean your desk then. <laughs> it's also National Gluten-Free Day. Mm. Well, well if, then yeah, I guess so. I Every mean, day. if you enjoy ruined bread, in, you know, you love it. You love in life, but it's a National Gluten-Free Day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like gluten-free bread. I'm just saying. I tried it. I thought it was horrendous. Nice. I was like, what the fuck? Like, people eat this? Like, I don't know. I, I'd just rather not eat bread. If I knew I couldn't have it, I'd just be like, I'm not eating it. Rather than have to put, have to eat the gluten-free stuff. Hmm? What does it taste like? Yeah. It's just not nice. <laughs> it's just haven't got that bread taste. It just doesn't look nice. <laughs> That's like, this is it. <laughs> Even Knox oh. turned down gluten-free bread. That's how good, that's how bad it is. Like, cardboard, truth seeker saying cardboard, India saying cardboard, the followers. All right. Okay. Did you, did you know, on the 8th of January, okay, it is also Argyle Day. Now, what's an Argyle? What's Argyle? It's uh, a Western Scottish design on clothing, like, on their kilts and you might see people wearing them on their socks and there are some people that wear the the jumpers it's that you know the diamond shapes yeah. right they have like a diamond shape and it's like cotton and stitching yeah 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 sometimes people that play golf wear it that's actually called argyle and it's from scotland like west scotland design uh in a 17th century so it is argyle day to celebrate that so you know this time next year if you didn't know already 8th of january wear those socks wear those tops fuck it wear a kilt and people will be like why are you wearing that be like it's argyle day don't you know get with the show i have to be honest i won't remember this <laughs> yeah i won't either and someone I will someone somewhere will especially if they're scottish they'll be like yeah fuck it yeah, like, oh. okay it is also coming of age day in japan okay Coming of age day in Japan is to celebrate women who turn 20 the previous year. It's like a, it's reaching a adulthood, if you will, in Japan. So they wear their kimonos, like real nice dresses and stuff. And they make it a big thing. A bit like a Western child's uh, sweet 16 or 21st. I don't know. It's like you're given these responsibilities but with a good thing it's like you are now allowed to yeah yeah Yeah. so it's uh it's that that's the coming of age day in japan right it's also national english toffee day if anybody enjoys toffee yes yeah i like yeah 
truth seeker, no, I will not be wearing a kilt next year on the episode nine. <laughs> <laughs> Michael said he will, if you remember. Do you remember those packs? Um, I think they were called Toffos or something, and they used to have all the different flavoured toffees. Oh, come on, guys, you must remember. I remember the like, cup with sand on the top. No, 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 they were like wrapped. You, they were like a tube, like of like like fruit pastels. But when you would unwrap them, they were inside a white wrapper. And you'd... Oh my god! Yes, tofu. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Was and it tofu? Like, it. is it tofu or like, tofu? Tofu. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Liz, like... yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is old but school, Liz. Ones. That is old do school. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Why don't they do those anymore? I love old school sweets. Yeah, they were still really bad for us, but yeah, you probably get them some. Probably American. Yeah, yeah. I have to admit, I do love American sweets. They are yeah. good. Someone else remembers in the comments. There's a Mimi Bell. She remembers Mimi Bell. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm not going mad. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. This is this came as a shock when I saw this. I didn't even know this was a thing because it's normally the other way around. But it is a National Man Watching Day. So, all the oh. women, all the women pervs out there, nice. it's your day. Like you can, like, oh, I'm not, not, well, not, not, not perving, but you can like watch a man. Like you can, like, <laughs> if you want to watch a man, today's your day. <laughs> so, like, be like, it's why are you watching him so much? I just, you know, this is a woman. That's my impression of a that woman. That sounds a little you know. bit obsessive, like stalkery. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Well, I get it all the time, Liz. I can't not. Yeah, I mean, I walk down a shopping centre. I get women literally stop and drop their bags and just like look up oh, and then I'm like, oh, fucking hell. I mean, I, I got to I pick a spot. I have, sure. to, I have to look at the certain spot. Guard. Yeah, trust. You know what I mean? I forgot to turn my swag switch off this morning and I woke up with a pool of bitches. I was like, fuck. Thank God I'm a woman, hey? <laughs> I'm joking. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, look, if you're not into watching men, all right, uh, it is also National Snuggle a Chicken Day. There's something else for you. If you if you don't want to spy on guys. I've got a few chickens in the garden, of course not, but yeah. <laughs> well, if you do this time next year, Liz, remember to give them a snuggle. Grab a chicken. Okay, and... I'll set a reminder. <laughs> I'm just going to start calling Danny chicken today. Oh, <laughs> Like when it. you get someone we'll go, hello, chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy days. Um, Finger only on, it. only on. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. You just oh. got a comment, Michael, there saying, oh, that's a sweet <laughs> one. And you went and said that. But you are Michael and, and we were never yeah, changing. That's, you. that's, that's my love. No filter. Level. No filter. <laughs> Uh, the 8th of the 1st, yeah, is also Plough Monday, okay? Now, that isn't because it's the 8th of the 1st. That's because it's the second Monday of the the month of the first yeah. month of the year, yes. So that is farmers honouring an old British tradition, uh, making the start of the agricultural season. They plough their fields. So oh, it's wow. uh, Plough Monday, yeah, yeah. Plough Monday, so that's cool. I think I've seen a few tractors out today, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, that would be the reason. Yeah. It's that time. Yeah. It's also show and tell at work day. Show and tell what? <laughs> to be fair, I did drop my trousers. Oh, for the <laughs> day. Look at this. <laughs> I didn't go to work today, so they're out of luck. So. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you show. I mean, some things you don't need to show, like... Have, like some people go to work and be like, Do you remember what he showed last year? Oh, I can't believe it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Oh, anyway, but today was the day. If you wanted to show and tell anything at work, you could have done it. You should have done it today. It is also uh, celebrating history of typing day. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but I think it's a big deal. Deep this with me, yeah? The 8th of January is the day we celebrate typing. Think of this. If we were still using pen and paper, how f how much typing has like revolutionized a lot of what we do? Like it's, well, it's revolutionized communication full stop, hasn't it? Yeah. Like I know it's not known, but I think this one should be known known. Like this should be a national 
holler that. It should be a, a highlighted thing because it's such a it's a it's a big deal, man. Like yeah. typing isn't just now keyboard and or the typewriter and now keyboard on your laptop or computer. We type text now. Like it's on your phones. Like it typing's massive. You know what I'm saying? Well I remember when emails were like revolutionary because it saved popping a letter in the post and you'd get an instant response. And then it was like blackberries and then it's like Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The chat rooms, like growing up with uh, MSN yeah. Messenger and yeah, I wouldn't know what the world would be without this now. Typing is well, we wouldn't be doing this as well because we've had to type in codes to get all connected on yeah, here. Yeah, creating code is typing. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Bad. Bad, bad. <laughs> it is uh, also War on Poverty Day, so obviously celebrate those days though. Yes, which celebrates systems that are put in place by our leaders, elected leaders, to try and crack down on poverty. Because it's 2024 now. Nobody on this planet, this shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. And we all know that, you know. So, yeah, today is a day to honour the war on poverty, which is still ongoing. And I do believe it will eventually have the equilibrium we all desire. Like, we all believe all everyone in the human race should have at least the basic necessities. Do you get what I mean? To not be at like, you know, the first survival chakra, like that first place on, uh, was it Maslow's hierarchy of needs? That's survival. They're not thinking of anything else, just, you know, survival. So we're trying to get there. So that is also very important. Big up everybody there involved. Famous birthdays. Now, I don't know if it's your birthday watching now. If it is, happy birthday. If your birthday is the 8th of Jan. Did you know that you share a birthday with Elvis Presley, David Bowie, and Stephen Hawkins? Wow. There you go. Three times. I did try and search some famous females born on this day. Uh, I'm just going to say, the ones that did show up, they ain't done a great deal like those three men. And I'm just saying, they're not on the same part you get what i mean i'm not going to give them a shout out here they were like i don't know influencers on instagram i was like what how are you nah you're not elvis presley david bowie stephen hawkins level behave if you were diana princess diana or i don't know mother Teresa or something like i might have given you a shout out but whoever the fuck you were on instagram it's your birthday today no one cares because i don't you know what i mean no one cares so let's just get it right i love it when he says behave you know he's serious when he feels <laughs> behave there's so much passion behind that behave. Yes. Behave like okay, <laughs> and that is it from us here at the Elite Thinking Club tonight. Liz, Michael, thank you. Love See you next time. Over and out. Followers, I love you too. And uh, yeah, exactly that. Thank you very much, everybody everywhere. You know what to do. You know how to do it. We'll see you on the next one. Everyone everywhere, peace and love. Peace and love. Cool. We out? We out. We're out. I've just got to say goodbye to my TikTok lot and I'll be with you guys in a sec. Give me a sec. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here tonight. That was a long episode, I know. I hope you enjoyed. I don't know you enjoyed. You wouldn't be here if you didn't enjoy it. But I'm, I'm going to go now. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>